Може, прийшло якесь повідомлення, яке... Починаю. Шановні пані та панове, шановні глядачі... Дякую, пані та панове. Dear viewers, my name is Daniel Lukiewski, and I'm glad to welcome you on behalf of KU Security Forum. We are starting a new season of our online discussions of our forum. Ukraine's main international non-governmental discussion platform on war and peace, national and global security, and world relations. The focus of our today's discussion is the visit of Ukraine's President Zelensky to the U.S. and his meeting with President Joseph Biden. Will Volodymyr Zelensky manage to establish a trust-based partnership with Washington? How reliable a friend of Ukraine does Joe Biden remain? And how deeply does his administration understand the strategic importance of Ukraine? Did official Kyiv and Washington hear each other? Those are overarching issues of our discussion, but not the only ones. The US-Ukraine summit cannot be considered in an exclusively bilateral context. How can the Russian aggression be counteracted jointly? How should the dialogue between the US and Europe, primarily Germany, be developed? What are the threats of the Russian project North Stream 2? What will be the impact of the Afghan developments and the role of the West in global affairs? All this will be discussed today by our distinguished panel. First of all, I'd like to introduce to you uh, Ambassador Alexander Rajbo, NATO Deputy Secretary General in 2012-2016, U.S. Ambassador to NATO in 1997-2001, and former U.S. Ambassador to Russia. I'm glad to welcome Ambassador John Herbst, Director of the Eurasia Center of the Atlantic Council, U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine in 2003-2006, our good friend. Today, during this discussion, we will be also joined by Berlin, and uh, I'm sure that in the near future we're going to be joined by Ms. Viola von Kramen, German politician, <clears throat> from the Alliance 90 the Greens, member of the European Parliament and the Committee of Foreign Affairs, first vice chair of the European Parliament's delegation to the EU-Ukraine Parliamentary Association Committee. Vitaly Portnik, a Ukrainian journalist and author, a leading national expert on the political and international affairs. And uh, Mr. Arseniy Yatsenyuk, chairman of the Kyiv Security Forum and prime minister of Ukraine in 2014 2016. Отже, моє перше питання до посла Джона Герпс. Дякую вам, що приєдналися до нашої дискусії. Дуже приємно бачити вас. Ми розуміємо з візита так, що президент Байден за певним Україну у, як вони сказали, непохитній відданості Вашингтона безпеці України, її суверенітету та євроатлантичних прагнень. Президент Зеленський став другим європейським лідером, який відвідав овальний офіс після інаугурації Байдена. Як ви оцінюєте результати цієї зустрічі? І як би ви охарактеризували загальну атмосферу візиту та ставлення американського керівника? He was supposed to spend an hour with President Biden. Yesterday, they met for over two hours. Um, my understanding is the discussion was frank and comprehensive, and that the two sides agreed on the most important issues. The most important issues are strong American support for Ukraine's security as it faces continuing um, Kremlin aggression. For Biden, the meeting was important to demonstrate his mastery of an important foreign policy issue following the problems he encountered in his withdrawal from Afghanistan. For Zelensky, it was important after the Biden decision, which I deeply regret on Nord Stream 2, to lift sanctions on Nord Stream AG. He needed reassurances that Washington had his back. He needed a clear message to Moscow that the United States 
was behind Ukraine as it faced po possible escalation of Kremlin aggression, and he received that. He received that first with a commitment to increase our military assistance by $60 million and to um, restart, uh, provide new life to senior commission of Ukrainian American officials. And so take a close look at an old US Ukrainian security um, document to bring it uh, up to speed and to enhance cooperation. So for Biden, it was a win again, demonstrating he's on top of his foreign policy game. For Zelensky, it's a win because the United States support is very, very important to prevent Moscow from escalating the war in Ukraine. And they managed to, I would say, uh, not let the, the serious differences over Nord Stream 2 get in the way of a successful move. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, in a joint statement, which was uh, declared after the meeting, uh, the United States and Ukraine sat to renew the Strategic Partnership Commission, which was very important. It was absent for almost two years. And the commission is going to be, as they said it, as they put it, reoriented and resourced to meet the 21st century challenges. Uh, what would be the level of that commission? I mean, who, would, who is going to be in charge? Who is going to be in charge of Ukraine affairs uh, in Washington, D.C.? Well, what, one thing we know is that Secretary Blinken is supposed to go to Kiev to follow up on these commitments. So clearly, the Secretary of State is going to be involved. And I suspect uh, he will rely on senior officials in state and also senior officials from the Pentagon, perhaps from the NSC, to um, work on these issues. And again, th this, is, this is an important development it demonstrates that the United States recognizes Ukraine, but to enhance the level of coordination because your fight against Kremlin revisionism very much is our fight. Biden and his team understand that. Uh, does it mean that we are going to receive a new American ambassador soon? Well, that's a separate um, but related question. I mean, every time you have a new administration, it takes many months to confirm ambassadors, to nominate and confirm ambassadors um, for all countries. Um, I expect we'll see a U.S. ambassador in Kiev sometime later this year. But it's also important to note that there's one specific um, complexity here. Uh, I agree with Ukraine, um, and for that matter, with most people in Congress, that Biden's decision on Nord Stream 2 was a strategic disaster for the United States as well as for Europe. Um, in in uh, response to that bad decision, Senator Cruz is holding up nominations in the foreign policy area, not just. Conceivably, this could also be an obstacle to getting a US ambassador out to Ukraine quickly, although I hope not. Uh, that's important to know, since uh, just to avoid any rumors and speculations why there is no American ambassador for so long in Kiev. And now I turn to Secretary Varsbov. Uh, Excellency, I'm happy that you are with us and thank you for, for, for accepting our invitation. Uh, we deserve more security guarantees, defense assistance, investments. This is a key message which was sent by many Ukrainians to the White House. In your opinion, is President Biden really indeed ready to do more for Ukraine? And how do you assess the visit of President Zelensky? How would you call this chapter of our bilateral partnership? You're welcome. Well, first of all, thank you, Danilo, for the invitation. And uh, I always enjoy KSF's events. Uh, uh, focus on the right issues. Uh, first of all, let me say, I, I agree with everything John Herb said about uh, the visit and how successful it was. Uh, one could wish that it had happened earlier in the year. Uh, perhaps even a, a few days before uh, Biden met with Putin, uh, but better late than never. Uh, I think it was a successful meeting in putting the partnership uh, back on track, uh, at least in part dispelling some of the doubts that had arisen about the U.S. commitment to Ukraine uh, after the Nord Stream 2 decision, after the Afghanistan pullout. And uh, because of the perceived prioritization of Russia, uh, back in uh, June when the Geneva meeting took place. Uh, I think that uh, this shows that Biden and the U.S. government as a whole 
continue to see Ukraine uh, as a strategically important country that's uh, on the front lines of freedom and democracy, uh, whose fight, as John said, is, is our fight as well. And uh, that it's important to uh, bolster Ukraine's security. Uh, on the question of uh, Ukraine deserving more, I think that if you look at the joint statements and the impressive array of deliverables that uh, the U.S. interagency and the Ukrainian government put together, Ukraine is, is definitely getting more uh, in, in many different areas, and the list is too long to, to, go, to go over here. But uh, I think it is a, a list of areas of cooperation that is befitting a strategic partner, and I think if we're going to call this, this period in our relations anything, it would be strategic partnership maybe 4.0 or 5.0. I mean, we've had many false starts and disappointments. I think this is an important turning of the page and there's a lot of work uh, now to be done. I would say uh, on the issue of defense and security, uh, while the overall content of the uh, joint statement and the strategic defense framework are very good, uh, I think that uh, the U.S. could have done more than than it did during this uh, this meeting. And here I may disagree slightly with uh, Ambassador Herbst. Uh, the $60 million assistance package in particular strikes me as uh, relatively modest in the circumstances. That's really the least the U U.S. could do, uh, given uh, the, the uh, what I would say is an increasing threat from Russia uh, beginning in the spring with the Russian buildup. Uh, in light of uh, more aggressive Russian behavior on the Black Sea, uh, this, this incident with the UK uh, HMS Defender, uh, and uh, potent, the, the possibility that Putin, after what happened in Afghanistan, may uh, himself believe that the US is uh, retre retreating from US leadership, from, from global leadership, and may uh, test us, test Ukraine uh, with some new aggression in, in the coming months. So I would have liked to see a more robust package, and I hope this is just the, uh, uh, the starting point. Uh, I also think the administration needs to be a little less uh, cautious when it comes to NATO and Ukraine's NATO aspirations. Uh, the administration is supporting those aspirations rhetorically, but it is uh, uncomfortable with doing anything concrete to even begin to advance that process. And I would hope that with NATO now, reviewing its strategy for 2030 and the years beyond, that uh, Ukraine's uh, integration in NATO for real would at least be part of that uh, discussion inside the, the alliance. But as long as membership is still beyond the horizon, the U.S. needs to do more with defense assist assistance, needs to enlist allies to do more, because only a few other allies uh, are providing uh, defense assistance and training. Uh, U.S. should encourage allies to bring their troops more frequently to Ukrainian territory to, to, as a visible demonstration of U.S. and NATO commitment uh, through exercises, through training programs, and uh, in general, uh, make clear that uh, Russia will pay a heavy price if it launches any new aggression. Uh, in that regard, de defense assistance provides negotiating leverage, and I think the more that we can strengthen Ukraine's defense capacity, the more likely there will be some movement in the negotiations. Uh, I know Zelensky sought some U.S. commitment to participate in that diplomacy more directly. I think that's also an unresolved question, and I hope the U.S. will, uh, will engage. Uh, the Normandy format and the Minsk talks are, are not going to deliver a deal uh, anytime soon. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Excellency, for this opinion. Uh, and now I turn to Vitaly Portnikov. Дорогі Віталію, дуже дякую за те, що ви брати участь в дискусії Київського безпекового форуму і тут зараз буде Віталій Портніков. Thank you very much for your participation in the security forum. Would like to hear your opinion on our prospects. What is your evaluation in principle of this comprehensive issue? It's not just the results of the visit uh, by the President Zelensky, but the potential impact of this visit, potential results. Uh, do you hope that uh, Zelensky and current authorities 
uh, would be able to make use of these uh, window of opportunities? Well, in principle, uh, I believe. Hello. Uh, in uh, diplomacy, principle, is not I believe that diplomacy is made the diplomacy by, is about concrete but by concrete actions and uh, uh, in the process of permanent cooperation, cooperation between, between countries, countries which consider themselves, consider themselves allies. allies. And I and, think um, that uh, I believe one that, uh, in the United States at the level of the, the president, uh, president, we are talking about, about this support. Ukraine uh, to Ukraine in, in this situation uh, of uh, countering Russian aggression. This is not Ukraine. just a this chance, is a chance Ukraine, but also a, but a challenge. Because it is because obvious obviously that this support, this is, support uh, first is all, primarily the support, support for Ukraine Ukrainian support and to Ukrainian efforts. That we all should and this is very important point. And, uh, and here we the, see the uh, what is uh, will these Ukrainian efforts be? In, in fact, I was uh, concerned by the fact that in the joint declaration, it was uh, announced that immediately the head of this joint uh, team would be appointed. Uh, frankly speaking, the situation with appointment into some Ukrainian institution should not be the part of a bilateral agreement. And when it happens, it means that Ukraine itself cannot independently resolve the issue of development of its own institutions. In this case, anti-corruption. I think uh, it's quite dangerous uh, that we uh, don't feel a real trust from the US administration. One thing is a declaration on support. Another thing is that they talk to the president of Ukraine after President Biden talking to Russian President Putin after the concentration of Russian troops on the borders of Ukraine, and after President Biden's uh, talks with uh, Chancellor Merkel about the North Stream. I would like uh, that the President of Ukraine be talked with before the principal decisions on Ukraine are taken. We say a lot that uh, uh, nothing can be resolved without us concerning us, but I think that at least before decision making, there should be consultations with us. So far, I don't see this. I hope that after this visit, we'll see some something. But it's very hard to say whether I will be like this or not, because uh, we need to answer some concrete questions to do this. First, to what extent President Zelensky understood the signals sent by the President Biden, how these signals are understood by the surrounding, by the entourage of President Zelensky. I don't have answers to these questions because I am not sure in the political competence of uh, many people who are to develop uh, relations between Ukraine and the United States. We may have different positions and different views, but we all hope that Ukraine can develop in cooperation with its allies. But I cannot say that I'm sure that this will happen. Uh, thank you very much, Vitaly. And now asking the same question to Arseniy Yudsenyuk. Of dealing with Washington, uh, with the White House, uh, as you well remember, we recently visited Washington and had a plenty of talks over there about the Ukrainian-American relations. So from what you saw there, uh, please share with our audience, what do you think is the biggest problem of our current bilateral relationship and how should we get it back on the right track? And how do you assess the results of the visit of President Zelensky? You're welcome. Well, it's great to have all of you and it's a great honor to participate in this panel. You know, Danila, you just mentioned that I had an experience in dealing with Washington. Uh, regularly, I dealt with the problems. Washington was never the problem. Usually, I cooperated with the uh, Washington, with the Oval Office, and with the President and Vice President, and then Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. Uh, everyone knows that Joe Biden is a student of Ukraine. He knows everything about Ukraine and practically everyone in Ukraine. So this was the first meeting between President of the United States and uh, Mr. Zelensky. Uh, 
as Zelensky already mentioned, uh, he is not sure whether they get some kind of chemistry between president of Ukraine and president of uh, the United States. But in my humble opinion, the most important issue, whether we have chemistry between Ukraine and the United States. Because we, as a democratic state, we had a number of different presidents and the United States had a, a number of presidents too. So Mr. Zelensky, uh, I believe, uh, had a great chance to present himself and uh, once again to represent Ukraine in the Oval Office. So uh, the way I see this meeting, whether it was good or bad, no doubt this was good meeting, period. The optics of the meeting was the right one. And uh, whether this meeting was a historic one, as Ukrainian uh, officials already mentioned, not yet. Let's wait and see, okay? It takes time for the history to judge whether this is a historic or slightly historic meeting. Uh, what am I happy with? Uh, frankly speaking, I am inspired by this joint statement of uh, the United States and of Ukraine. The reason why I am inspired and emboldened by this statement, because in my opinion, it's a kind of action plan between our two countries. This is a very clear-cut deliverables that have to be achieved on the Ukrainian side and very clear-cut targets that are to be supported by the United States government. So now the key thing is whether Ukraine is ready to deliver and whether the Ukrainian government and Ukrainian president will endorse and execute this. Uh, I strongly believe that this is the only option we have on the table because this is the will of the Ukrainian people to have strong, democratic, prosperous, country, uh, the country which is to be the member of NATO in the short run or in the long run, but to be the member of NATO, the country with the energy independence, the country as a strong partner and ally to the United States, and the country as the member of the European Union in future. In this uh, case, uh, um, I have to say that this is not a short-term future. So uh, it's important that both presidents agreed on a clear-cut agenda and roadmap. There are issues that are not resolved. For example, the Nord Stream. The reason why I am uh, raising this issue is because that's not just a bilateral issue between Ukraine and the United States. It's more. This is an issue uh, that implies uh, at least cooperation between Ukraine, Germany, European Union, and the United States. Uh, we will be deprived of billions of dollars due to this Nord Stream. Uh, and uh, I do not support uh, neither the decision of uh, Chancellor Merkel nor uh, the decision of the US administration actually to underpin this project because this is anti-American, anti-Ukrainian and anti-European project. And I would always reiterate the same narrative. And the Europeans already suffered due to this project already suffered because Russian Gazprom started to manipulate on the energy market of the European Union and already gain. This is the message to my American friends. Could you imagine uh, two uh, distinguished ambassadors that Russian Gazprom, due to manipulations on the energy market of Europe, already gained 6 billion US dollars in just last three months? as they cut the supply of the natural gas uh, to the European Union. So this issue has to be tackled separately, and we need definitely uh, to um, debate more over the means process, because it got stuck. Okay, And again, that's not a bilateral uh, uh, issue. This is a trilateral issue, at least, between uh, Ukraine, uh, France, Germany, and uh, plus the United States. Uh, so, uh, to put it in the nutshell, the visit was good, the optics was good, uh, this is the jump start, mm -hmm. this is a very good jump start, uh, and it's up to the Ukrainian authorities and it's up to the American administration uh, to make this visit a historic one. We have the chance for the historians 
to assess this visit as a part of the global history in case if we success in case if we succeed and we're gonna succeed wonderful uh, uh thank you mr yosinyuk uh for, uh, for mentioned a number of very important points let me uh develop on uh the north stream uh two uh, project which is the russian gas pipeline project uh, which bypasses Ukraine. And now we turn to Ambassador Herbst. John, uh, I would like to discuss this issue since this is very important for, uh, not only for Ukraine, for the Ukraine, for the audience of the Kyiv Security Forum, but also for our European and uh, uh, American partners. Um, uh, Ukrainians continue to fight against the Nord Stream 2. This fight, however, may irritate some groups of decision makers in Washington. Some important voices, what we understand, um, call this approach of keeping fighting against the Nord Stream 2 uh, counterproductive. So my question is, I have two elements in that question. First of all, uh, my question is, what's your opinion? How do, what do you think about the, the ongoing process? And also, let me quote the joint statement. The United States and Ukraine said, that we continue to oppose Nord Stream 2, which we view as a threat to the European energy security. How does it correspond to what President Biden signed with Chancellor Merkel? You're welcome. Okay. Um, the most important thing to note is that Nord Stream 2, the decision by Biden to, to lift the sanctions on Nord Stream AG was a strategic blunder for the United States and for Europe. Um, Nord Stream 2 is a geopolitical project um, only undertaken because Putin has hired um, former senior officials in Germany. And this promotes German-Russian business. And then the German businesses that are part of this become apologists for Putin's foreign policy. So this is essentially an agents of influence policy, which again is bad for the United States. Because we don't want to, we don't want to enhance the influence of Putin's Putin firsters in Germany, which then become apologists again as Putin conducts wars of aggression against Ukraine, against Georgia, and commits provocations across Europe and globally. Um, I think President Biden made the decision to lift the sanctions in order to improve U.S.-German relations. But that was a serious mistake because all it uh, did was enable, again, uh, agents of influence in Germany to work on behalf of Putin. Now, uh, I believe that this decision by Biden is deeply unpopular in Congress, including among Democrats in Congress. But unfortunately, the Democrats in Congress are unwilling at this point to stand up in an organized fashion against this dreadful decision. In this state, they, they distinguish themselves from the Republicans in Congress who stood up against Trump's efforts to manipulate Ukraine for political advantage. But I think the Democrats know that it's because Biden is a new president and they don't want to undermine him. Uh, but whether or not Biden will be able to sustain this level of support is a question mark. His popularity has taken a huge hit because of his um, failure in the evacuation of Americans from Afghanistan. His disapproval ratings are now larger than his approval ratings. You already have Democrats publicly, excuse me, anonymously saying they're concerned that, that, that Biden may be a disadvantage for them in the 2022 congressional election. If Biden's unpopularity continues, I think you'll see Democrats in Congress who's thus far unwilling to push back against Biden's lifting of sanctions change their, their mind. I understand already that Senator Shaheen, who's always been opponent of Nord Stream 2, is now willing to speak out in a more forthright way. Um, I believe that people in Ukraine who've told, excuse me, people in Washington who've told Ukraine to not talk about Nord Stream 2 are doing the bidding of the administration that's trying to hide its embarrassment about this dreadful decision. And I think ultimately they cannot sustain this because many Americans understand that this was a serious strategic mistake for the United States. So I believe it's useful that Biden and Zelensky were able to agree in a joint statement that Nord Stream 2 is bad. I think Ukraine needs to continue working with its friends in Congress to see if they are willing to pass legislation which will sanction Nord Stream 2 and not give the president waiver authority. And while I believe the odds of that happening right now are not large, 
again, if Biden's popularity continues to um, languish, um, this can happen. Uh, thank you, John. That was very very strong point, and thank you for this encouragement. I believe this uh, this is completely right. And now let me let me uh, get back to Secretary Bergebo. Excellency, uh, I wish to 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 raise the issue of Russia, which is very important in our discussion. This matter, the Russian problem, is is is, is extremely important in our talk. Um, fin uh, first of all, if, uh, in today's press, I have already seen the reaction from uh, uh, the Kremlin, uh, the uh, Putin's, uh, the President Putin's uh, spokesperson uh, has already reacted to what happened in Washington, uh, calling uh, the uh, discussions between two pre presidents uh, uh, for, uh, as dangerous, uh, with uh, potentially dangerous. Uh, so uh, they, they, they for, for that, I believe they have shown already some kind of emotional reaction to what we saw yesterday in the White House. Uh, the Financial Times quotes Nikolai Patrushev, Secretary of Russia's Security Council, who recently said uh, that Washington would abandon Ukraine's pro-Western leadership as it had the Afghan uh, government. They quote him. Uh, was the ousted pro-American regime in Kabul saved by the fact that Afghanistan had the status of a principal U.S. ally outside NATO, Patrushev said. Uh, a similar situation awaits supporters of the American choice in Ukraine. This speculation is clearly uh, aimed at provoking Ukraine's public opinion in yet another effort to raise uh, anti-Western uh, sentiments. Uh, how would you respond uh, to what Secretary Patrushev said? And what would you tell Ukrainians? You're welcome. Okay, well, let me say I'm not at all surprised by that statement by Patrushev. Uh, it's a classic example of Russian uh, strategy for driving wedges, uh, in this case, between uh, Kiev and Washington. Uh, you know, trying to take advantage of the doubts that have arisen about U.S. reliability as an ally and partner. Uh, and uh, you know, I think that uh, this, this particular statement is, a, is very clever. The Russians are very good at their disinformation. We have to respect their skills. And uh, in this case, his reference to this major non-NATO ally status, that's how we, we, we translate what he was talking about, MNNA status, uh, his statement that that didn't save the Afghanistan government from, from oblivion uh, is a way of warning Ukraine that any support in the security field short of a NATO Article 5 guarantee is not going to protect Ukraine and that Ukraine should abandon its NATO aspirations uh, before NATO abandons Ukraine and uh, accommodate Russia and its designs for a kind of new Yalta as the security order of Europe. So obviously this is uh, outrageous, but predictable. Uh, it, and it's mirrored by the, the Chinese propaganda directed at the people of Taiwan in the very same way, trying to cause them to doubt that the US will come to their defense if, uh, if China were to attack. Uh, I think the, the answer both to the Russians and for the Ukrainian people is that uh, Ukraine doesn't stand alone. Uh, all of NATO uh, and the de democratic world stand with Ukraine in terms of supporting its sovereignty and territorial integrity, rejecting Russia's uh, spurious territorial claims to Crimea uh, or any other parts of Ukrainian territory. And that was demonstrated at the Crimean Platform Summit. And uh, that, that the world's democracies will continue to support Ukraine's efforts to build a strong and prosperous uh, democracy based on rule of law and respect of human rights. Uh, that will continue to help Ukraine defend itself. Uh, uh, as I said, I think NATO needs to begin to step up to the issue of NATO membership. That's not gonna happen overnight, even in the most optimistic scenario. So in the meantime, Ukraine has to work with its friends, take advantage of the many opportunities that I think this summit has created in terms of new avenues for cooperation, uh, incentives for investment in uh, renewable energy, for example, uh, cooperation on research and development on new uh, weapon systems, cooperation to revive Ukraine's space pro 
program. Lots of things that Ukraine can gain uh, and show the Russians that this relationship is a genuine strategic partnership and that they're not going to bully Ukraine into submission. Uh, let me just say two, two things. I, I agree with John's analysis of what Nord Stream 2 represents. It certainly is a bad deal for European energy security and was a mistake by the administration. I think, however, Ukraine is wise to kind of focus on how to mitigate the damage and mitigate the risks, which was the U.S. intention in its agreement with Germany, but insist that the U.S. hold the Germans to the spirit and the letter of their commitments, for example, on not uh, allowing Russia to terminate Ukrainian transit or otherwise use energy as a weapon, uh, insist on the European energy rules regarding unbundling that they must be applied to Nord Stream 2 or else sanctions will be imposed. Uh, I think there's something to work with, uh, even though the U.S. seems kind of un unwilling to abandon its deal with Germany even as it says it opposes Nord Stream 2. I, I, I was surprised by that sentence in the joint statement. It seemed not to ring true, but uh, they're trying to have it both ways. And I think Ukraine can take advantage of some of the opportunities to hold the Germans to their commitments and uh, mitigate the, 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 the impact of uh, Nord Stream 2. Uh, uh, thank you, Ambassador Vajbo. You know, I have this feeling, you know, that we lack uh, uh, we definitely see uh, a general framework which is declared by the joint statement and this is natural for this type of documents to be uh, of, uh, taking after the meeting of two presidents. Nevertheless, we lack something, um, I would say, concrete details how to move on. Uh, for, uh, Excellency, if I may, I would like to dwell on the, on the element which you, you have already, already mentioned uh, which is uh, the, the peace process. This is yet another example that we would like to, to hear something more concrete than the general declaration of standing by Ukraine and standing with Ukraine. So, uh, so, so far, uh, we haven't heard any concrete further steps that uh, the United States government is ready to take uh, in the peace process. In your opinion, what should be the concrete role of the United States in, in, that, in that process? There is an, an interesting element, the in, interesting moment in the declaration. Uh, of course, the declaration, declaration doesn't mention the membership, the NATO membership action plan, which is a negative thing. But nevertheless, it uh, doesn't mention the Minsk agreements either. What would you say about this? Well, I think first, uh, not mentioning the membership action plan should, <clears throat> should not be seen as a, a serious setback because I think Ukraine was on the wrong track <clears throat> before the NATO summit in June and pushing so hard for MAP. In practical terms, MAP is, doesn't add any tools to the toolkit that Ukraine doesn't already have through the annual national program, the NATO-Ukraine Commission, enhanced opportunity status, et cetera. So it was kind of a, the wrong priority. Uh, but I do think Ukraine has a right to, to urge NATO to start at least a process, may not have immediate results, but a process that begins to look at what it would take to integrate Ukraine and Georgia, which is, has got the same promise in 2008, uh, to actually uh, integrate in NATO and, and how would an Article 5 guarantee be applied? It's not an easy task militarily, uh, given the geography and given uh, uh, Putin's uh, strong views. Uh, but I think uh, it would have been even better if, if this communique had specifically rejected Putin's ever, efforts to draw red lines, both about NATO membership and about NATO presence on Ukrainian territory. That's not his business. That's between Ukraine and NATO. And uh, we need to uh, remind Putin of that uh, repeatedly. On uh, the Donbass negotiations, I, I think it was interesting that there was no reference to Minsk as the basis. I think that uh, may signal an understanding that Minsk, as interpreted by Russia, is a trap. And uh, it, it would lead to the whole, even if it worked, it would lead to the holding of elections in the occupied territories 
under continued Russian occupation or occupation by Russian puppets and would not produce a free and fair result. So uh, you, know, you can't completely jettison Minsk, but I think that looking for some new principles that would make for a viable reintegration of uh, the Donbass in Ukraine is what needs to be done. And that's where the United States can play a role in shaping the thinking of uh, Berlin and Paris, uh, working with Ukraine on this, and uh, figure out what's the best way for the U.S. to engage in the process. There's no single format. Uh, I would recommend a new format since the Normandy format seems to be fairly uh, moribund. Uh, but format is less important than coming up with a, some new ideas that could break the logjam uh, while using military support and other leverage to convince Putin that it's time to make a deal and not to just prolong this conflict indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. We definitely need new ideas in that process. Я хотів зараз поставити запитання Віталію Портнікову. Uh, I would like to put a question to Vitaly Portnikov. Everything we keep hearing now is um, um, a recognition of the fact that a visit brings about new opportunities and the general assessment is positive. But uh, Ukrainians have numerous uh, complaints about the West, sometimes uh, very infantile ones, alongside with uh, justified criticism and an attempt to uh, influence our Western partners, there's one dangerous phenomenon that I can discern here, the, this kind of anti-Western uh, hysteria and uh, um, preaching of our own individual uh, way. How can we oppose that? Це те, що було завжди тенденцією в українському суспільному житті в українській політиці, не тільки зовнішньої внутрішньої. I think that in Ukrainian uh, both internal and foreign policy it was an element uh, since 2014. We've heard about this our own way. It's an attempt to speculate on differences between the West and Russia and to get money from both from the West and from Russia at the same time. It's a sort of policy uh, which means uh, to not reform anything, do nothing, but tell Russia that we're approaching the West, tell the West that we're approaching Russia, and this way we would be able to get money from both sides, making no changes in the country, and enriching oligarchs. Uh, 2014 uh, didn't leave Ukrainians a choice. It was. It became clear that real reforms are needed, that nobody would give money from the West. Prime Minister Yatsenyuk can tell you in details about this process. Now there are certain illusions. So I would say that they exist because people who are at power in Ukraine are very far from real political analysis of the situation. So such dreams are coming, like maybe China will give us money and maybe we'll be able to get some funds not fulfilling conditions or uh, those uh, in, in, in famous uh, billions which we can get from IMF not giving them back uh, but uh, this is the only reason for, for that is pandemic and that's all so I think uh, we must uh, persuade Ukrainians that reforms are needed for Ukraine not for the United States not for the West and uh, these should be based on the uh, assessment of uh, previous mistakes and reforms and changes. Ukrainians need them, first of all, in order to live a proper uh, life. Thank you very much. It's an important topic, which I think uh, is worth a detailed discussion, especially this myth about uh, external management, that there are certain enemies who try to uh, pump out blood from Ukraine, use our own resources. It very much reminds a scenario written in, in, in Kremlin. Now I would like to give the floor for concluding uh, words to Arsenyi Yatsenyuk. In conclusion, when today we speak about obligations which were expressed by President Zelensky 
and obligations which President Biden mentioned in his talks with the Ukrainian head of state. What's your feeling? What prospect is uh, awaiting for us? I would say more correct would be to say that President Zelensky has no obligations from the point of view of his personality before the United States or the, before the President Biden. Zelensky has obligations only before the Ukrainian people and Ukrainian Ukraine. The same way as the President Biden has the first and foremost his obligations to the uh, people of the United States of America. And we all must understand that American uh, government will not implement reforms in Ukraine. American government will not be engaged into uh, making Ukrainian justice a fair. Ukrainian government will not combat corruption in Ukraine. Ukrainian government will help Ukrainian president, Ukrainian government and Ukrainian authorities to make Ukraine stronger, more successful, safer, and maybe even a model uh, 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 country if there is a political will of the president of the government and if this wish is supported by Ukrainian people. Vitaly said, uh, spoke about the the so-called third way. I know where the third way leads, to nowhere, into abyss. This way we tried to follow before 2014, when there were situations when we went to the West, then we went to the East, we went to NATO, then we turned around, went to the Eurasian Union, then we say that you want to be members of the European Union and looking for membership in the Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization. So the aim of this visit is different. It's very good that we had this visit. The United States demonstrated something which Russia did not expect. That's why they are so nervous. They see that the United States do not uh, turn back to Ukraine. On the contrary, they demonstrate very clear support to Ukraine in defense, in financial sector, in economy, in geopolitical sectors. It's very good. And the second, what should happen after they visit it, after these uh, wonderful declarations? Implementation of what has been signed, implementation of what was taken as responsibility by everyone and the work of Ukrainian authorities in order to implement this. And then Americans will support us because we will be supported only when we demonstrate that we work uh, confidently and uh, work hard. I am sure that Blinken will come uh, because he's going to meet in you know, the Commission Strategic Partnership at the level of foreign ministers. It will get together and the decisions will be uh, uh, implemented. Uh, $60 million of uh, security assistance. Also, there is a memorandum on $3 billion of Exim Bank, but so far it's not yet decided. In order to get to these billions of Exim Bank, we should do a lot of serious and hard work. And there is a number of other issues of our strategic partnership. Besides the United States, uh, European Union, and some other world democracies, we have no other partners. That's why we have to demonstrate this partnership in deeds, not in words. Thank you. Distinguished American guests and American speakers for, uh, for their time and for their contribution to our important discussion. I think that this is very important for the Ukrainian audience to hear your views, to hear your opinion and your assessment of uh, President Zelensky's visit uh, to Washington, to the United States. I thank you very much. I want to thank Vitaly Portnikov and Arseniy Yatsenyuk for participation in this discussion. Just some days ago, President Biden made a very important uh, uh, speech in which uh, he described his vision of the foreign policy of the United States for the nearest future. He said, that uh, the United States doesn't want 
to change countries. This is the issue of other countries to change themselves. But America is ready to help. The world is ready to help us. Everything depends on ourselves. Everything depends on our energy and our wish to reach success for Ukraine as a member of NATO and European Union. And this doesn't depend on the president or the government. It depends on our people, on our citizens. Thank you very much. And thank you for a very interesting discussion. We are coming back to new political season.